everyone, I'm Ashley and today I'm going to be doing my uni book haul. This is for my second year of studying literature at university and I'm not even attempting to lift up this huge pile of books because it goes further down than you can see and it's like longer than my arm basically, so this tall. <laughs> These won't be all of the texts that I'm studying because I have some that I already owned and I have things like poems that I don't buy because the university will give them to me and I don't like poetry that much so I don't want to go out and buy them. But basically these will be the majority of all of the books that I'm studying in my second year of uni. So yeah, I'm not going to do that because that is very precariously built. I do kind of have some organisation to this so we'll see if this works. But yeah, as always everything will be linked down in the description box. Most of these were bought second hand. I think there might be five which I've bought from new and then the rest of them are second hand. Some of them you can really tell are second hand and then some of them look brand new so I don't really care because I will end up writing all over the majority of them so it doesn't matter to me and it saved me a lot of money so and so let's just talk about all the books that I have before they topple over and crush my cat because it's not laid in the cleverest of positions. So the first book that I got is very stereotypical for a literature student because it's the complete works of Shakespeare which is huge. <laughs> I don't think you can be a literature student in England and not study Shakespeare. It's just a given. For this year I do have an entire module dedicated to Shakespeare and there's also a couple of plays outside of that module as well so it was just easier to buy all of his works in one big combination. I nearly knocked the entire thing down, okay! This is a dangerous book, I'm gonna put it down. But it was just easier for me to find a bound up collection of them and I found that one in a charity shop for like £3 so it was a bargain. <laughs> but in case you're interested I will just read out the plays that I do have to study because I made this like timetable type thing reading schedule in my bullet journal so they're all listed here but I have to read Hamlet, As You Like It, Measure for Measure, Richard II, Richard III, Macbeth, Titus Andronicus, The Tempest and Antony and Cleopatra. I don't know if there's more than that because there might be some more in semester two but I can't remember any of them. I don't think there is. And last year I studied Othello and A Midsummer Night's Dream. So at this point I feel like I'm making a substantial dent in Shakespeare's works and when the book is that big it could actually be a dent because you could clobber someone with that. <laughs> Next up I'll move on to the gothic module and the majority of these books are really short apart from one and gothic is probably going to be one of my favourite modules because I just love dark stories so these are the ones that I've been most excited about. First up we have The Castle of Otranto by Horace Walpole which is apparently the first gothic story. This follows the Prince of Otranto who is called Manfred and he has set his 15 year old son to be married. However, on his son's wedding day, his son actually dies by being squished by a giant helmet. Because of this, Manfred no longer has an heir. He does have a daughter, but because of when it's written and the fact that she's female, he doesn't have an heir. And so he becomes up with this brilliant idea that he will marry his son's fiancée instead, which she is not thrilled about. She runs off, lots of weird things start happening in the castle, and so the story happens. <laughs> I have already read this one, it's full of annotations, it's very strange and yeah. And it's quite intriguing to read one of the first gothic novels written. <laughs> Next up we have A Sicilian Romance by Anne Radcliffe which is apparently exactly the same as The Castle of Otranto. I haven't read this yet but I am reading it tomorrow so I'll, I'll see how true that is. You don't know when tomorrow is because I'm filming this last week in your time I think. I can't remember when I've got the schedule to go up but Anyway, as I'm filming this I haven't read this but as you're watching it I will have read it. <laughs> but all this mentions on the back is two women who live basically in a very isolated castle and weird things happening which to be fair does sound like the castle of Otranto so we'll see how it goes. 
Next up we have The Monk by Matthew Lewis, which always reminds me of Neville Longbottom because the actor is called Matthew Lewis and I'm just like, wrong person. It's not Neville. <laughs> this is about a man who is tempted by a young girl who is disguised as a boy in a monastery and from this everything just goes downhill by the sounds of it because it says on the back that he continues his descent with increasingly depraved acts of sorcery, murder, incest and torture. Yeah. <laughs> it also says it combines sensationalism with acute psychological insight and I love it when dark stories are dark in a psychological way so I might get along with this one particularly well and I hope so because it's probably the longest one of this module. <laughs> it has a very intense cover like that's something. <laughs> Next up I have The Turn of the Screw by Henry James which is about a young governess who takes on two orphans as her charge to teach them and she ends up finding a malevolent thing following them and just over them at all times and she's trying to figure out whether this is actually to do with the children, whether it's following them, whether it's vicious, whether it's violent or just... She's just trying to figure out what it is, basically, from what I can gather from the back anyway because, again, the back is not very insightful. But this seems like it has the typical ghostly thing happening relating to children, which does creep me out more than it should, so this could be a good one especially because I'll be reading it like around Halloween time I think possibly oh wait no I'm reading it later than Halloween but oh well never mind I'll still enjoy it <laughs> I also have what is probably deemed as a cult classic for gothic stories because this is The Bloody Chamber and other stories by Angela Carter I have never read The Bloody Chamber but people rave about it so much so I'm very intrigued and this is basically just a collection of dark stories. Some of them are based off fairy tales and legends that we have in England, or just that we've heard of in England at least. And I honestly haven't even read anything of Angela Carter, so I'm quite intrigued to see what my opinion on her will be. And then the final book I bought for my Gothic module is Nothing on Earth by Connor O'Callaghan. This is a very modern gothic story which surprised me because we sent it to classics at uni and this is like 2016 I think it was published. Let me have a look. Yes, this was published in 2016, so very, very modern <laughs> by university standards. And this one, basically a man is in a house of some sort and a young girl comes, knocks on his door and everything changes from there because she starts telling him a story about where she came from and it's just weird because all the family are disappearing one by one and there's not really any clear-cut answers to all these weird things that she's talking about so yeah that's what I've gathered from the back anyway and it has questions on the back like is she telling the truth is he telling the truth so again it might be quite psychological as well which I would be quite interested in so I'm very intrigued to see how this very modern take of gothic will live up to the very old classic editions of gothic. It should be interesting. So next up I'll be moving on to books that I bought for my philosophy module. We do talk about the philosophy behind literature so yeah the book that basically this entire theory stems off is Aristotle's Poetics because this book basically talks about the basic concepts of art and literature. It's very short, it's literally 50 pages just talking about how art should be built and received and valued. Yeah, <laughs> it's, you can't really explain it any more than that, it is just 50 pages worth of theory. <laughs> but in relation to that theory we have quite a few books to use as examples and to pick apart different aspects of philosophy within literature. So so the first one that we have for this is On Beauty by Zadie Smith. This is basically about two feuding families and it asks questions such as why do we fall in love with the people that we fall in love with? Why do we pass on our mistakes to our children? And what basically makes life beautiful? Because of that sort of synopsis I thought this would be a lot more 
philosophically based than it is but from the very short bit that I've read so far again I will have finished this by the time this video goes up but from what I've read so far it's just a standard story so it might just be one of those things where you pick out the philosophical side of things and when you analyze it rather than it being like thrown in your face which I'm hoping for because I just I like fiction more than like overly analytical things words <laughs> But yeah, we have this one. I'm quite excited about it to be fair because I've been wanting to read something by Zadie Smith for so long and I just have never picked up anything by her even though she's got quite a few books out. So if I like this one, I'll be looking for recommendations about which one to go to next. I know she has one called White Teeth which is quite popular but if you have any recommendations for Zadie Smith because I think she has quite a lot of books anyway. I said that in full confidence as if I know but I feel like I just see her everywhere. I don't know whether that's about the same books or whether she's got quite a few that people love. But if she does have quite a few then please do recommend me another one because I'll definitely be picking up more if I enjoy this one which I think I will. <laughs> but the next book is Fight Club by Chuck Palahniuk and this is crap. <laughs> oh no it's about a man who sets up Fight Club which is basically a place for men to go and fight out any of their problems that they have and basically just fight away the stress of life. <laughs> However Fight Club becomes out of control basically and it is, there is a lot more behind the story than that but I can't tell you about it because that would be spoilers. So yeah, I have already read this one, didn't like it. I'm sure you know this by now because I've probably ranted about it in my most recent wrap up which I think was in September. Yes. And apparently Angela Carter is a thing for this year because I also have The Passion of New Eve by Angela Carter. This has a very vague synopsis I think because it says New York has become the city of dreadful night where dissolute Lila performs a dance of chaos for Evelyn. But this young Englishman's fate lies in the arid desert where a many-breasted fertility god will wield her scalpel to transform him into the new Eve. The Passion of New Eve is an extraordinary journey into the apocalyptic vision of the author Lona Sage called The Boldest of English Women Writers. So I think it is just an Adam and Eve retelling and it looks weird, it sounds weird, it's Angela Carter so it probably is weird from what I've heard and I like weird so let's see how this goes. <laughs> I also have Hard Times by Charles Dickens which you can tell very much so that this is second hand because the cover is about as wrecked as my heart when I see something this beautiful, this wrecked. <laughs> that was dramatic. <laughs> it is what it is. I haven't actually read any of Charles Dickens' full novels but I do have two of them to read this year so I guess it's time to start. I have read A Christmas Carol in his short stories last year though so if that counts then brilliant. But anyway, this is about a town called Coketown, which is dominated by a man called Mr. Gradgrind. I think that's how you say it. And he doesn't really tolerate anything fanciful or imaginative. He is very utilitarian in how he runs things. Because of this, his daughter ends up in a loveless marriage. His son ends up rebelling against him and going into gambling and robbery. And at some point in the novel, they end up meeting two people who are basically the exact opposite, I think. And... It's a story of kind of being enlightened to another way of thinking or like another perspective, I guess. And it says on the back that Gradgrind is eventually forced to recognise the value of the human heart in an age of materialism and machinery. So it sounds like it's going to be quite a redemptive story. <laughs> and the last book for the philosophy module is Labyrinth by George Louis Borges? Borges? I'm not quite sure how you pronounce that one. But this is a collection of short stories which I think have philosophical undertones to them and that's again is basically all the synopsis says so I apologise for not being able to give a better synopsis but there are lots of stories in this so I guess that's why I can't. But I had literally never heard of this before so can't really give much of a synopsis. Oh this is a bad thing about doing book hauls for university because it's hard enough doing 
synopses for books in book hauls anyway because you've not read them yet well if you've not read them yet then you obviously don't know what the synopsis is but like if it's for university you've not chosen the books yourselves and so you've not looked into it to see if it's something that you would enjoy or like picked it out of your own accord so you can't remember it out of an enjoyment side of things and also when there's just this many all of the blurbs mixed together and <laughs> it's very hard to come up with synopses for them all until you've read them it's basically the end of that ramble but moving on <laughs> Oh, I also have a children's module next semester, so I'm not studying these ones yet, but I do have The Secret Garden by Frances Hodgson Bennett. And by the sound of it, this is about a little girl who is apparently horrid, and because of this she's sent to live with her uncle as a sort of life lesson, I'm guessing, getting another experience, kind of like Nanny McPhee 2, because, you know, the children are sent to a farm in that one. So, a similar thing in this. Upon arriving at her uncle's house, she ends up tending the secret garden. She meets a friend, she meets her cousin who has been hidden from her this entire time. And they are changed through this experience. I'm guessing it's quite a, not redemptive because, you know, she's like nine years old or something like that. It's one of the growing up things where it's like, the moral of the story is to be a nicer child type story, I think. I've never read this before. I know it's a lot of people's childhood favorite so I'm quite intrigued to see what it's like and also what we'll be taken from it because I think on the children's module we'll be talking about like how dark children's stories are or like the hidden messages in them so it could end up being quite intriguing <laughs> next up is one that is very much beloved of the young adult community quite a while ago but that is Notes and Crosses by Mallory Blackman this like I said is a young adult book and I think it's a retelling of Romeo and Juliet because Society is split into noughts and crosses and there's one person from each side, a boy and a girl, who end up attracted to each other and they shouldn't be. Oh, what a dilemma. But yeah, I don't actually like Romeo and Juliet so we'll see how this goes. I feel like the trope of forbidden love for me is either a massive hit or a massive miss. So we'll see what side this lands on. Next up we have another favourite of many people and that is The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas. Now I'm not going to give a synopsis of this because I'm going to read the one that it gives for a very particular reason. You'll understand why when I read it, which I'm going to do now. <laughs> because all it gives you for a synopsis is this. The story of The Boy in the Striped Pyjamas is very difficult to describe. Usually we give some clues about the book on the jacket, but in this case we think that we'll spoil the reading of the book. We think it is important that you start to read without knowing what it is about. If you do start to read this book, you will go on a journey with a nine-year-old boy called Bruno, though this isn't a book for nine-year-olds, and sooner or later you will arrive with Bruno at a fence. Fences like this exist all over the world. We hope you never have to encounter such a fence. Now, a lot of you will probably know what the story is about, what it means with the fence, and why it's being quite elusive to the story. But I haven't read it, I haven't watched the film. I know what period it's set in, so I know that I will probably cry. <laughs> but I have been meaning to watch the film for ages, but I always said to myself, I'll read the book first. But then never got around to it, so university is actually helping me get through my TBR, because this has been on it for many years, and I'm only just now getting around to it because I have to. And then I have four more left which I can't remember which modules these fit into because I have one which talks about the representation of power, death and desire and then there's another one which is for the 18th century literature. So I don't know which ones these fall into because I've not sorted them out yet and I'm definitely missing some because I'm sure I have more than four books between two modules. That just doesn't seem right so I'll probably have to buy more books in January when I actually <laughs> figure out those reading lists but that's a problem for later on because I have to get through like pretty much all of these for semester one and there's more so that's a problem for another day. <laughs> but the first one we have I'm pretty sure is for the 18th century module but that is Moll Flanders by Daniel Defoe. This is about Moll Flanders, who was born in Newgate Prison and abandoned six months later. 
When trying to find her place in society, she ends up resorting to adultery, prostitution, and becomes a thief. So she does actually end up back in Newgate prison, but obviously a lot older than six months old. <laughs> I don't think I'm going to get along with this one, but I'm trying to be optimistic, so I'm going to say that I'm intrigued. <laughs> as I've been saying with every book so far and we shall see how this one goes like in January or February or March next year <laughs> next up we have The Woman in White by Wilkie Collins which I read over summer because it's 800 pages long and absolutely huge this is about a ban a ban it's not about a ban this is about a man called Walter Hartwright who is appointed as the drawing master at Limeridge House on his journey to Limeridge House, he comes across the woman in white, who has apparently escaped from a asylum. I'm talking too fast to get my words out properly, I apologise. <laughs> After this event, lots and lots of weird things happen, there's marriage scandals, lots of intrigue and mystery, but yeah. I've already read this one, again I will leave a link to the wrap up that this is in down below. <laughs> I also have another Charles Dickens book and that is Oliver Twist. I haven't read Oliver Twist, like I said, I haven't read any of Dickens's full novels and I don't think I've watched a film, I've watched a production of it before but that was a very long time ago. So I can't really remember the plot but I'm pretty sure there was something about Oliver Twist being an orphan and he's sort of taken out and trained to be a thief. That is literally all I can remember but I know there's so much more to the story than that. It's just that I haven't read or seen a version that goes in depth enough or that I can remember enough of to be able to explain any more than that. <laughs> and the final book that I bought for university, as of right now at least, is Mary Barton by Elizabeth Gaskell. This is about Mary Barton, believe it or not, and she is kind of caught between two men. There is her lover who is working class and there is also the mill owner's son. She abandons the working class man for the mill on her son because she wants to better her future and has a better chance of doing that with someone who is of a higher class. But then the mill on her son is actually accused of shooting at the working class man and she is caught between them both. I've never read anything by Elizabeth Gaskell but I know that this is a very popular book of hers so I need a different word for intrigued because I was going to say again I'm quite intrigued to read this one. I'm always intrigued to read books that I'm given because that's just who I am. But yeah, you'll know my thoughts on this one sometime next year. <laughs> so, that huge pile there is all of the books that I've bought so far for university. I didn't have to buy them all because my university does give out links to online versions and that's what I'm doing for any poetry that I have to read. I know that I've got to read some by Edgar Allan Poe for the Gothic module, but I do find it hard reading on screens and I also just like having physical versions that I can return to whenever I want to and annotate because then when I'm writing essays I can just like get them all out around me and you know reference them at will rather than having to try and find it online again and go through all that it just the thought of that stresses me out so I like having my nice physical versions <laughs> and I do buy them all secondhand so even though it does still come to quite a lot it comes to considerably less than they would if they were all new. <laughs> because I think that price would actually give me a heart attack. And like I said, there are some books that I'm studying but I haven't bought because I can either find like poetry through my university or there's some that I'll be borrowing. So I know that I have to study Katie by Jacqueline Wilson and I don't really want to own a Jacqueline Wilson book. So I'll be like finding that somewhere else. And then, like I said, there are some that I already own, such as Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Wuthering Heights. I have to study those two for the Gothic module. And for the children's literature module, I have to study the third Harry Potter book, Prisoner of Azkaban. So, obviously, I already have that. So yeah, there is a lot of reading to be done, and I feel well impressed with myself when I see them all stacked up like this, because, like, I'm powering through this entire stack and more. It makes me feel amazing. <laughs> As always, I would love to hear your thoughts on any of the books that I've mentioned and your thoughts on the fact that I'm studying them because, you know, I've... Why are you interrupting me? Why? Why? Come on then. There he is. <laughs> Took him long enough. So yeah, like I said, I would love to know your thoughts on any of the books that I've mentioned, as many as there were, and also your thoughts on the fact that I'm studying them, because 
a lot of them, like the children's classic, will have been read just out of enjoyment, so... I don't know, I feel like people might find it intriguing to see that I'm studying them. I feel like words aren't happening anymore, so I'm going to go now. Hopefully it's also given you an idea of what I do at university, the sort of books that I study. I mean, it will have done because it's literally a list of them. Again, words aren't happening, so I'm going to go now. And yeah, I hope you're having a lovely day. Oscar hopes you're having a lovely day and I shall see you next time with a new video. Bye.